London Daily Paper, London Paper, London Daily Paper, London Paper, Paper. Our job is to find out who the bloke is, not to scare him away. Yeah, but what about the letters he posted? Oh, they'll turn up somewhere. I brought this letter to you myself, Nielsen. I think it's a matter for Scotland Yard. Yes, he's been writing to the press for weeks. <laughs> Always signs himself Earl of Destiny. The fellow's a madman, writing me that only he can save the world. Yes, sir. Send to Dennis in here, will you? Yes, sir. We've been working on this case for weeks. Now, come in, Sir Dennis. Inspector, what's the latest report on that case? Uh, Constable Thackle McFane saw a man post two of these letters tonight. They identified him as Richard Gannett, residing at number three, Burnhamwood Crescent. Richard Gannett? Gannett? Possibly the foremost electrical engineer in England. Gave up a promising career about a year ago to do research. You see, Sir Bess is sane or insane. The man has dangerous potentialities. Yes, I see what you mean. Inspector, I wonder if you'd mind giving a little look-see at number three, Burnham Wood Crescent. Very well, sir. <sighs> Penny! Coming, Captain Drummond. Tenny, have we another white tie? I took the liberty of buying one, sir. Ah, brilliant idea, Tenny. If you'll permit me, sir, it may be for the last time, sir. The art of tying a white tie, sir, comes only with years of experience. Um, that's Phyllis. Answer the door, Tenny. Yes, but I, I can't leave it at this point, sir. Well, come along now. <laughs> Darling. <laughs> I, I beg your pardon, sir. Oh, go right ahead, Tenny. Don't mind us. Pretty good, Tenny. And being executed under great difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> I try to give satisfaction, Miss. And you do, Tenny. After we're married, you darling, Tenny shall always tie your ties. Right. Is everything all ready? Oh, I hope so. But if I'd known a church wedding was so much fuss and bother, I... Well, of course, if it's too much trouble to marry me, why? Well, it is a lot of trouble. But you see, I rather like the sound of the name, Mrs. Hugh Chesterton Drummond. I've been practicing writing it. It would be a shame to waste all that practice, wouldn't it? Oh, you would have to go to that old bachelor dinner tonight. Well, it'll be the last. After tomorrow, I'll be a quiet old married man. Yes? Absolutely. I... I'm telling the boys so in my speech tonight. Hugh, darling, you're not really going to make a speech. <laughs> Surprised, aren't you? <laughs> you just drink your lemonade and listen quietly like a good girl. <clears throat> Gentlemen, fellow members of the Drones Club, friends. I wish to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the kind things you have said about me this evening. Here, yeah, yeah. here. On the eve of my wedding to... On the eve of my wedding to the loveliest girl in England. I hope... I hope... No, no. I hope that you will all be half as lucky as I. Boo! Fake. Tenny, you come out of there. We can only hope, sir, that the members of the drones club will not be as observing as Miss Phyllis. You're not going to have him hidden under the tablecloth. Well, certainly, how else do you think I could make a speech? Tenny, have you been writing Captain Drummond's love letters to me? I beg your pardon, miss? Have you? Well, you see, miss, I, I, uh, uh, perhaps a word or two of editorial advice. Well, they were very nice love letters anyway. I rather like them, miss. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, 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 everybody. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, am I interrupting something? Not at all, Algie, I'm just leaving. Well, I hope you boys have a good time at your bachelor dinner. Good time? <laughs> We're going to paint the town a bright... No, no, you know how dull these things always are. Yeah, just a few dry speeches. Sure. Dry speeches? Well... <laughs> well, I must be running along. Auntie will be getting impatient. Bye, darling. Don't forget, you have a date with me tomorrow. Well, Elsie, I thought you said nine o'clock. I did, but I came early on purpose. I wanted to talk to you about something. Yes? Mm -hmm. Something very important. It's... Uh, what is it? Oh, yes, yes, the letter. Uh -huh. 
Uh, yes, I, I have it somewhere. Here, hold my grapes, will you, old boy? <coughs> oh, yes, yes. Yes, that's it. That's right. It's from old Richard Gannett. He's not coming to the dinner tonight. Oh, it's a shame. We'll miss him. Yeah. Read why. Dear old pal, why should I attend your silly dinner when the whole world is hurtling to destruction and only I can save it if I wish? The Earl of Destiny, ex Richard Gannett. Penny, my hat and coat. Penny, help. I wonder why he doesn't answer the bell. Old Richard Holm, look at the light. Yes, sir. I say, you, look at the light. It's in the street light. Well, every light in the street is flickering. I say there, what in blazes is wrong with the lights? We're thinking of looking into that. This happens every night. No sooner do I get to reading my paper than bingo. You've got to pop in an old Richard for his own good. Up you go, Angie. Really? I say, Hugh, you know, what goes up has to come down. Hold my grace, will you, old boy? is dangerous. Of course he's dangerous, aren't he? Oh, I can see the headlines. Hugh Drummond and friends slashed to bits by madmen. Ouch! It's hot. Alfie, there's something very strange here. Yeah, well, my curiosity's leaving me. Let's get out of here, old boy. Not until we find Richard. Huh? Uh. Richard, are you all right? Out. He's ill. I'll to get a doctor. I'm not ill. Look out for the stinger. Never mind the doctor, Algy. He's dead. But how? Look out for the stinger. Whatever could he have meant by that? Look. Pistol within his reach, too. He never had time to use it. There they are. I saw those blackguards climbing up the shrubbery. Yeah, he's quite dead. I shall have to take you both in the cut today on suspicion of murder. 
Well, now that you've heard our story, will you please strike off this hardware? I don't know, Drummond. I really don't know. This is the umpteenth time you've seen fit to meddle in police affairs, and we can't have it. But, boy, we really can't have it. But, Inspector... Don't, don't call me Inspector. I haven't been an Inspector in years. Not an Inspector. I'm sorry. But I meant well. Oh, I know you mean well. You've always got the best of intentions. But you have the most uncanny faculty for always getting into trouble. Getting everybody into trouble. I'll leave those handcuffs on you just to make certain you won't go out and uncover any more murders. And I suppose you managed to interfere just the same. Good news taking them off. Thanks awfully. What was that Gannett said? Look out for this stinger. What do you suppose the poor chap meant by that? The stinger's a cocktail. Wipe him off, rum and lime juice. Ask Sir Malcolm McLennan to come in here, will you? Yes, sir. Sir Malcolm is our medical examiner, but I suppose you know that. Of course, Inspector. Yeah, I thought you would. Sir Malcolm, these are the two gentlemen who discovered the body. Ah, so you found the body. Where did you find it? In a laboratory, number three, Burnham Wood Crescent. That's very interesting. In view of the fact that Richard Garnett was killed by the sting of a Manta Verostris Viridan. Uh, 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 what? A Manta Verostris Viridan. What's that? It's a very rare specimen of the giant stingray, which leaves a characteristic triple puncture in its victim. Now, how in places could a poisonous fish go swimming down number three Burnham Wood Crescent? That, gentlemen, is your problem. Good night. I don't like the sound of that manta, what you call it. Suppose we'd met it in the dark. I'm not so sure we won't, Halsey. Coming? Not so fast. Where are you going? Uh, we go out fishing, Inspector. Uh, don't call me Inspector. Taking the body away. We can disconnect it from here. Carefully, carefully, fool, don't go so fast. What if the police come back? They won't catch us, Lady Bell's on guard. Yeah, a blinking amateur. A woman. On a job like this, a woman's nothing but an ignorance. Well, Lady Bell's extremely useful to me. If the guard outside makes a move, she'll signal us. Now then, what do you two want this hour? Well, we did want to get into this house. No one gets in this house. Of course, we understand that. All the same, officer, there's some very funny business going on around here. I... Oh, absolutely. What? Look, look. There's a beautiful lady acting very strangely. See? Well, you can't expect me to arrest her for blowing a blinking horn, can you? Hey, can... Here, where did he go? Huh? Oh, here. Uh, he's gone fishing. Oh, he's gone fishing, has he? Oh, well, I think I'll go fishing, too. But, and here's my first catch. Oh, no, really, you, you can't do this. You can't trifle with the law. What is all this, Constable? Hello, Inspector. I'm in again. Him and his friend was trying to get in this house. The other one made a sneak. Oh, he did, did he? What's the matter with the lights? Another little job, eh? It looks as if we need search no further for the mysterious Manta Birostris Viridens. Wrong again, Inspector. Because this poor chap seems to have been killed by shrapnel. <laughs> now he wants us to believe there's been a war. War, my friend, is just beginning. Bulldog Drummond has been arrested and is being held by the authorities in connection with the recent murders in Burnham. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. They want to know downstairs, sir, what they're to do with the prisoner. Drummond? I'm perfectly satisfied. Let him remain where he is. Now he's so peaceful with that boy in the lockup. Yes, but... Uh... He's not so peaceful in the lockup, eh? <laughs> All right. Send Hugh Drummond up here, will you? Yes, sir. Well, Inspector, it's your case. What do you propose to do with him? Well, sir, I... I don't think we can prove a murder case against him. Drummond? Good heavens, of course not. Drummond never killed anybody. But he knows something and we've got to find out what. Ah, come in, Hill, come in. Well, sit down, my boy. Thank you. 
You? I want to talk to you seriously. There are one... Oh, I... And I, I... Oh, let me do that. Well, thank you. Did you, uh, did you sleep well? Thank you, no, I was too busy. There you are. So you were too busy to sleep, eh? Well, half an hour more and I'd been out of your birdcage. What? I think you'll find this very nearly fits the door of my cell. You, Drummond, one of these days you'll go too far. Well, I thought that's what you wanted. The farther the better, you said. I didn't mean it that way. Now, last night, you visited Gannett's laboratory twice, didn't you? Yes, I did. Did you notice anything? Notice anything? Well, yes, I did. The second time I went there, the machine was gone. What did you have to do with the disappearance of that machine? Well, I... I carried it away in my pocket. Now, you listen to me. What? We want to know how that machine disappeared in spite of a guard at the front door. Well, there's always a back door. There was a guard at the back door, too. It didn't go out the front door, it didn't go out the back door, and it didn't go up in the air. Marvelous, Inspector. Uh, all right, all right. But we want to know where it did go. And how did Guggins' body get there? You can make things a lot easier for yourself by cooperating. Come in. Oh, what is it? Sir Malcolm Glenn has sent this, sir. He spent the night picking it out of Guggins' body. Certainly. Wait a moment. Put these all together. And you have a 38 caliber automatic. Hmm. Must have blown up in his pocket, but that doesn't make sense. Uh, uh, you've made the usual inquiries in the neighborhood? Yes, of course. It's a very respectable neighborhood. Major Trumley on one side of that house and Lady Beryl Leonard on the other. Really? Well, now I think I'll run along if you gentlemen are through with me. Oh, yes, yes, of course. You're going to be married, aren't you? Now you've got to rush off to the church, haven't you? Yes, thanks, Inspector. Uh, don't call me Inspector. Oh, sorry. Well, uh, thanks, Toots. Auntie! Auntie! Don't tell me I can't stand any more. Listen to this. Scotland Yard officials today continued their efforts to clear up two mysterious deaths in Burnham Wood Crescent. Q.C. Bulldog Drummond, young man about town, who has been held in custody all night, is being released for lack of evidence. Oh, he'll be here at last. Oh, you answer it. I'm too nervous. Yes, it's like living on a volcano. <laughs> Hello? Are you there? Is it you? Yes, you. You'll be a little what? For your own wedding? You want to do what? Oh. Well, what did he say? Well, he says he'll be a little late for the wedding because he wants to go to the zoo. Pardon me. Have you a specimen of the Matabrostrus viridens? The what, sir? Uh, stingray. Oh, yes, sir. Right this way, sir. Bread and butter. Here he is, sir. A very small one, but they're very hard to keep alive in captivity. It seems quiet enough now. Oh, yes, but, sir, if you could put your hand in there, Freddy would jab you with his poison so quick. <laughs> no, thanks. I don't think I'll try it. You know, he's not been the same since his mate died last week. Well, you had two. Oh, yes, but poor Mamie died. And a good thing for me, sir, a gentleman gave me two quid for her remains. An animal stuffer, I think he said he was, sir. I see, a taxidermist, eh? Uh, yes, sir, a taxidermist. I think I know the chap, a big, uh, big hearty fellow with a beard. I don't rightly know, sir. Oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. He was very dapper. He had a walking stick, carved like at the top, and with glasses. I see. Well, if anything happens to Freddy, I'll double anyone else's offer for the carcass. Are you uh, uh, a taxidermist, too, sir? Well, confidentially. I'm a much better taxidermist than the man with the glasses.
Why did you let him out of your sight, Kenny? It wasn't my fault, sir. How many times have you tried to marry him? Five times, sir. And have you done it? No, sir. This is the last time I'm going to best man without a groom. <laughs> you! <laughs> your due at Sir Albans in eight minutes. I know, sir. I know, I know. I've laid out your striped trousers, sir. Miss Clavering isn't marrying my striped trousers. She's marrying me. As you wish, sir. Have you got the ring, Elsie? The ring, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I think so, old boy. Oh, for heaven's sake, Elsie. Uh, oh, pardon me, sir. Oh. Someone's playing a joke on you. <laughs> Well, what does it say? Just a joke. Come on, Auntie. I know it's time, but you're not going before we hear, are you? Oh, Hugh won't let me down. And if he does, I'd as soon have it happen at the church as here. The uncertainty sort of makes a game of it, don't you see? Well, Hugh. Hello, darling. Mercy! He's not supposed to see you in that dress until you come down the aisle. I just run along and do a little packing. Never mind, Auntie. Hugh doesn't have to tell me what he came to say. I can read it in his eyes. I'm being jilted. Deserted, practically, at the altar. Oh, sweetheart, we can't go ahead with a big church wedding when the papers are full of my arrest for murder. Oh, can't we? Oh, darling, listen. If... You listen to me, Hugh Drummond. I think I'll do a little unpacking. Auntie, please stay. You won't understand that I'm not a cream puff. That my place is with oh, you. Darling, you don't understand. Oh, but I do. You think you want to clear your name. But actually, you want the excitement of the chase. Very well, Hugh Drummond. You can do as you like. Miss your own honeymoon if you want to. But I'm sailing on the Empress of Siam tomorrow. Auntie can use the other ticket. Oh, I don't think I possibly could so soon. You see, I knew she would. Well, that's that. Yes, isn't it? Hugh. Yes, Auntie? Hugh, you're not going to let her go away like this, clear around the world. Let her go. I want her to go. The farther, the better. Oh, I don't believe you. I just received a note that changes everything. Have a look at that. Someone pinned that on my coat a while ago. Dear Drummond, you better forget all you know and stop meddling. Perhaps you cannot feel frightened for yourself, but my sting can strike someone very near and dear to you, if necessary. Merciful heavens, someone very near and dear to you. Obviously, Phyllis. Now, do you understand why she has to take that trip? Well, to Dennis, did you kiss the bride? There wasn't any, sir. What? No bride, no groom, no wedding. I waited for hours. So he's going to go on minding my business for me, is he? Listen to me, this is an order. Pick up Hugh C. Drummond if he pops his nose within half a mile of number three Burnham Wood Crescent. Hold him and notify me immediately. Yes. May I have a word with Lady Bell, Leonard? I see. Wait. Yes? Oh, Lady Bell, Leonard? Did you know Richard Gannett? Gannett? You mean the man who was murdered next door? I'm afraid I hadn't the pleasure. Oh, well, his death was very mysterious. I thought perhaps you might help. Help? I? Do tell me how. Well, have you noticed your house lights flickering in the evenings? Lights? Why, I can't say that I have. I see. Well, thanks very much anyway. All this sounds terribly thrilling, Captain. Mysterious death and flickering lights. What does it mean? Well, I haven't formed a theory as yet. But when you do, won't you drop by and have some tea and tell me all about it? Yes. Thanks very much. Tell me your refreshments. Tell me, sir. You know, Hugh, it's still hot from ringing doorbells. <laughs> Well, anyway, Arthur, we proved one thing this afternoon. We certainly did, yeah. What was it? With the exception of Lady Barrow, everyone in the neighborhood of Burnham Wood Crescent admits that the lights have been flickering. Well, we know all that. Yes, but if the machine had that effect before it was stolen yesterday, it will cause a similar trouble wherever it is now. Oh, I catch on. All we have to do is to scour the city. Yeah. Yeah, but London's rather a big city, isn't it, old boy? Here we are, sir. Oh, Penny, you're a wonder. I do my best, sir. <coughs> well, what is it? I have a message, sir, from Mr. Ramsbottom. <laughs> Mr. Who? He's the night manager of the London City and Midland Electrical Company, sir. I asked him to let me know if there were any complaints of flickering lights tonight. And what did you find out? Well, I found there was one chronic complainer, sir, from five Burnham Wood Crescent, <laughs> a Major Tremblay. Oh, well, there goes your theory. If the Major's lights were still flickering, it couldn't have been Gannett's machine. I'm afraid you're right, Elsie. Wait a moment. 
Of course, the machine is still being used in the neighborhood. Tenny, my coat. Very good, sir. First time you have your gun. Now, you remember what happened to Goggins? Now that shop window, just for fun. Fun? Huh? I say, old boy, this is no time for window shopping. We are still being followed, sir. Huh? Well, what do we do now? Be nonchalant, Alfie. Light a cigarette. Hugh, look. <laughs> Yes, it's a matter too. I remember. Perfect. I set off everything in the window. It's some sort of rain. Beginning to see the light for that. Must have come from one of those buildings on the hill, the warehouse or beyond. What must have? The ray from Gannett's machine. Oh, that thing is more powerful and dangerous than anyone dreamed. Elsie, we must find that if we have to search oh, every no, building. Oh, no, you won't. In. Caught you in the act, eh, Captain? Yeah, we have special instructions to look for you. Look here, Constable, this is ridiculous. I had nothing to do with this explosion. Beg pardon, sir, but would you come along and tell that to Colonel Nielsen? We'll carry on, you old boy. We'll carry on. <laughs> But how? Captain Drummond said we were to search every building in that direction. Right ho. So far, so good. Don't look now, sir. There are two policemen behind us. So there are. Gannett's murderer. Let's look, sir. George Colonel Nielsen. We caught him red-handed, sir. In the very act of blowing up a gunsmith's shop. We'd await here till you come, sir. Very good, sir. Thank you. Here, here. No, you don't. Look. Well, what's the light got to do? I wonder what's in all these boxes. I really don't know, sir. Fireworks. Oh. Splendid. I just love fireworks, don't you, Telly? You know, sir, I once saw a display of fireworks that has never been surpassed. Oh, well, when I... oh, oh, oh. Oh. Oh, 
Hey, look here, Captain Goblin. You're resisting an officer, you know. You can't do that, you know. You know now that the machine has a range of a quarter of a mile. When I put that information before the right people, we'll have the secret agents of every nation in the world bidding for the detonation. Oh. Well, thank heaven that's over. I, I'm afraid it's not over. Oh. <laughs> Good work, you. Why are we coming here? Because this is the only house in the neighborhood where the occupants deny the flickering of the light. Oh, uh, and you think the machine is here? I know it is. Careful, now these people are dangerous. And look out for anything that looks like a stingray. I certainly shall. Do you think they'll let us in? Well, sir, if they won't, they've got to come out sometime, haven't they? Of We're not going to wait. Come on, Yelty. We've got them on a run now. They're scared. They'll be too busy trying to escape to do Phyllis any harm. Well, what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to Phyllis. There's no need to keep her in the dark any longer. Splendid idea, don't you think, Terry? No, sir. Huh? Well, don't you think it's safe for me to make up with Miss Phyllis now? I'm afraid it's not possible. Miss Phyllis is sailing in an hour and five minutes. Around the world, too. Kenny, do you know the cross-country speed record? By car, about 110 miles an hour. You're going to see it broken in a taxi cab. Taxi! 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 taxi, taxi. taxi. Oh, taxi. Child, there's no use looking. I'm not looking for anyone. But if he did come, I... You! Phyllis, wait! Phyllis, darling! I, I love you! Phyllis, I love you! Yes, I'm afraid he did. My cousin and I only just made it. Hey, Beryl and Alfredson are on that boat. There must be a tug for hire somewhere along the waterfront. We'll go with you. Not this time. This is my job. You can wait for me in London. Huh? Any luck, Inspector? Yes, we stumbled across a secret passage in the upper hall of Gannett's home. It was newly made and opened through Not into... Not into Lady Beryl Letter's house? Yes. Then, great Scott, one of Lady Beryl's servants must have been in the pay of foreign agents. We'd better have Lady Beryl in for questioning. I rather think she flew the coop, sir. And disappeared? Yes, she and her gentleman friend, known as Alpherson, haven't been seen for four days. Yes, and Drummond's been gone for four days. You know, Nielsen, I wonder where they... Drummond? Is. Not a chance. That boy's as straight as a string. You seem fond of the fellow. I am very fond of him. But he's always upsetting our upper kind. May I suggest that you try working with him? At least that might prevent his flushing your birds before you're ready for a shot. Good morning, Colonel. Flushing my birds. Been able to find Drummond? I uh, don't know, sir. What do you mean you don't know what? Well, this was forwarded to us today by the dock police. 
was found in the water nearby where a man answering to Drummond's description fell from a pier and was washed out to sea. H.C.D. Can either of you definitely identify this coat? Yes, that's... That's Hughes Macintosh. I sewed that button on only last week. When did he last wear it? The night of the explosion. Ah, oh, that's that. I'm afraid poor Hughes drowned. Did, uh, did he ever say anything to you about an international spy, a man who calls himself Alpherson? Well, you see, this Alpherson was... I can't talk about poor old Hugh. Captain Drummond didn't always take us into his confidence. Mm. Uh, do you know why he called on Lady Beryl Leonard? Well, he, I mean, she was... Jenny can tell you more about it than I can. Would you object if I came back later on? I'm all just out. No, of course, of course. Uh, come back later. We should have told everything, Danny. That wasn't Captain Drummond's way, sir. Tell everything. But, Danny, we've got to do something. Yes, but what? I don't know. Something drastic. If you were here, he'd know what to do. May I get you a whiskey and soda? No soda, Tenny. I haven't the heart. We can't rest until we track down the scoundrels who did for you. We'll follow them to the ends of the earth. Sir. And when we find them, we'll... We'll... I believe the phrase is... We'll wipe them out to the last man. Take that, on that, on that! Give him one for me. You! Captain Drummond! <laughs> You're not dead? Not a bit dead, Alfie. Why didn't you let us know? Because I was picked up by a fishing boat, and they wouldn't bring me in until the mackerel stopped running. Huh? Tenny, remember never to serve me mackerel again. Can I get you something? No. Here, I think I'd better get you something. Here. There. Now, buck up, old chap, because you're both coming for a flight with me. Flight? Where? After the Empress of Siam. Who? The Empress of Siam, the ship that Phyllis is on. Uh, around the world? Well, if we hurry, we won't have to go quite that far. Come in. I knew it. I can't talk about poor old Hugh. Captain Drummond doesn't always take us into his confidence, sir. If I weren't so happy to see you alive, I'd, I'd lock up all three of you. Oh, please don't, Colonel, because I have a seaplane waiting. Ah. Now you're going to fly off to your girl, I suppose. Yes, I am. No, no, you're not. I'm tired of having you flush my birds before I'm ready to shoot. Lady Bella Leonard and a man called Alberson have disappeared with Gannett's machine. No. No, 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 I know you know. Well, I'm sorry, Colonel. No, no, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry, because you scared them away. Now you're going to find them. What? I said, now you're going to find them. I'll give you an official letter telling authorities everywhere that the case is now in your hands. Well, send it to the base, and I'm taking off in 20 minutes. Oh, no, you're not. I am. No, you're not! Then I can't take the case. No, no, wait, 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 wait. All right, all right, but... Oh, but please don't get in my way anymore. And don't get in my way. Yeah. I'll find Lady Bell and Alpson within a week. So don't get excited, Inspector. Don't call me Inspector. You may call me Inspector. Oh. You may call me anything you like if you'll only find those people. Now be off with you. I'll send your letter to the plane and you'd better send a wireless to that girl of yours. Yes, I have already. Thank you, sir. on the three. Keep that thing away from me. Why, well, it's quite harmless until I press the knob. Keep it away from me anyway. I don't want to be another Richard Gannett. This clavelling's late. 
Thank heavens this is the last time we'll be playing bridge with that silly woman. We don't think we to escape, Drummond. I still think it's odd that his fiance should be on board this boat. It's mere coincidence, I tell you. She was on the boat before we reached it. All the same, I don't like it. She spells danger to her. Well, here they come. And don't forget, my dear, that we are still cousins, and the name is still Perkins. Oh, hello. Well, how do you do? Oh, good to see you. Well, you're very charming. You've lost it here. Miss Gaffin, would you sit here? Thank you. And I think you'd better sit here. Thank you so much. It's going to be very delightful, as I know. Well, yeah, I we hope we all have... Our bridge. I could have made poor Hart, but he would keep on bidding. And I couldn't let him... Why? We are there. We're at St. Arthur's. Look! Now listen, dear, you mustn't be so unhappy. Why hasn't Hugh sent a message? A radiogram for Miss Clavering. They said I'd find her here. Oh, I'll give it to her. It's from Drummond. Then soon fail to stop him. Darling Phyllis, all's right with world, forgive me. Alpha some letter to board your ship. Look out, Drummond. You're taking a chance. Not at all. I should provide her with a novel. Is it? Is it from you? Yes. Well, of course, if you really want me to. I know he'll explain it all. Dear Phyllis, this is easier to write than to say. You must forget me. I am in love with someone else. Bulldog Drummond. The brute! Oh, you poor deserted darling! It's not true. It's signed Bulldog Drummond. As long as I've known Hugh, he's never used that nickname. Then who did send that? I'll tell you later. But aren't you going down to tea? Drummonds never eat when they're on the trail, aren't they? Oh, the Perkinses have already gone to show, miss. Aren't they going on around the world? No, they only booked to St. Arthur, miss. Auntie, get your hat. Pack everything. Pack? We're leaving the cruise right here. Of course. What? I'm going to send a wireless to London, to Hugh. No, I won't. I won't give him the satisfaction. I'll do this all myself. I'll show him. I'll go to the police. Oh, the police! You look after the luggage. Meet me at the hotel. I want to see whoever's in charge. Uh, what about, miss? I want you to arrest two passengers who just got off the boat. What's the charge, miss? Oh, murder and uh, theft of a very important machine. An arson. Oh, the Burnham Wood Crescent case back in London. This way, miss. Yes. This is the gentleman they sent out from the yard to help us handle the case, miss. Oh, thank you. You! Hello. <laughs> I'll handle this case myself, sir. Very well, sir. Quaint idea, not allowing any automobiles on the island, isn't it, Aunt Meg? This is a much nicer way of travelling, isn't it, Henny? Do you find it too, madam? Hello, 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 hello. Any luck? Yes. Good? Bad. We've searched every hotel and lodging house on the island. Well, uh, Phyllis knows they landed last night. They must still be here unless they hired a fishing boat to get away. Present to Mr. Mrs. Smith. Mr. John Smith. What a marvelous disguise for an international agent. It was Lady Beryl who first discovered Gannett's secret and arranged the manner in which it came into our possession. Mr. Smith, my dear, represents. Well, shall we say rather that I have contacts? I'm a middleman for certain types of information. This is something entirely different. Mm. Another death ray. My dear fellow, they're as impracticable as the ray that was supposed to stop airplane engines from the ground. This is a detonator. Designed to set off explosives. At very close range, of course. Up to half a mile, we know. That's Triangle Point across the bay. Do you mean to tell me that you can actually set off an explosive on that point across the bay? Watch me. 
No, 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 wait, wait. Well, you both may as well know something that's cost me a small fortune to learn. Triangle Point is a secret naval ammunition warehouse. A huge quantity of high explosives are stored there. A sporting target, if you ask me. I might arrange with some foreign power to pay us nicely for the destruction of that ammunition dump. Splendid. In the meantime, you can give me some sort of demonstration. <laughs> Gun and six cartridges. That makes seven cartridges all together. For one guinea. Too much. No, too much. Here, what's the truck? My gun exploded. Nobody touched it. His cartridge has exploded. Our friend Alpherson is using Gannett's machine again. Unless you are not, Mag, check with the electric company and see if anybody's reported flickering lights. Right, darling. My job will be to send another cable to Nielsen. And Teddy and I will be the reserves. Oh, wait. You two are the only ones in our party Alfredson can't recognize. May I suggest, sir, that Mr. Longworth and I dress up as tourists, and then we may stumble across their hiding place. Brilliant idea, Tim. I rather like it, sir. Now, there's somewhere along the waterfront. Keep your eyes open for anything unusual. Anything. Anything? Unusual, sir. Yeah. As fast as you can, Tenny. Your terms are high, my friend. I'm sorry you're not interested. I'd have to try elsewhere. I didn't say I wasn't interested. But a million pounds. However, when my associates join me here... Lady Belden and myself have reasons for hurrying after what happened yesterday on the steamer. No, the delay won't be long. My man Gumber is on the lookout for them. He'll bring them here at once. I say, Tenny, that would make an awfully nice snapshot. Get in there, will you, old boy? Certainly. How do you do? Thank you. Now then, see the pretty birdie. to buy a nice pet, sir. Pet birdie. He's the most intelligent bird, sir. Let's Get have a look at him. Boy, you lover. <laughs> Get a boy. Would you like to buy the bird, sir? Very cheap. O only one pound. No. You see, as a matter of fact, we are not tourists. We are secret investigators. And, uh, huh? Yes, well, and uh, also, we are looking for the trace of a machine. A very peculiar type of machine. Why didn't you say so, gentlemen? My master's expecting you. He is? He is, sir. Let me come this way, please. Uh, uh. The should be here any moment now. We'll show them on the machine, get our money, and be off before midnight. But how? The ship doesn't sail for two days. I charter the fishing boat. Don't forget that with the drummer's still alive, we can't hope to hide out here indefinitely. Excuse me, Mr. Smith isn't here. What do you want? I think you expect two gentlemen, sir. Ah, gentlemen, I can't tell you how glad I am to see you. No. I, I mean, really? We'll dispense with the introductions. I understand you wish to be anonymous. Oh, yes. Yeah, very anonymous. <laughs> Lady Bell and myself are anxious to conclude this matter at once. Evidently, the demonstration this morning has convinced Mr. Smith that we aren't overcharging him. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Have you the money with you? No. no well, that is... We're wealthy. Uh, no, no, it's within easy access. <laughs> then, then while we're waiting for Mr. Smith... What are you doing inside? I took two gentlemen upstairs to see the machine, sir. You did what? I took them upstairs, sir. You fool. What? Clever, isn't it? Yes, very. These men are imposters. What? Hands up! Come away from that door. Come on. Come here. The door, Mr. Longworth. Now, if you will find Captain Drummond, I'll hold these gentlemen here. Nice work, Tenny. I rather like it, sir. Hey, Tenny, shoot! Can't you shoot them, Tenny? Look what they're doing to us. Oh, what are they doing here? Take them in that room. Just a minute. Let me have that ring. Oh, this is highway robbery. Oh, no, please, old boy. My, ma my mother gave me that, and it's not at all valuable. Valuable to me, my young friend. By means of this ring, I'm going to decoy the meddlesome Captain Drummond to a spot where I can deal with him once and for all. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Anything, Captain Drummond? I'll take the message, please. Uh, this boy says he has a very important message for Captain Drummond. Mr. Longworth says he's fine what you want. 
Say for you, meet him, five o'clock, old lighthouse triangle point. Did Mr. Longworth really give you that message? He say, give you this, then you know I speak true. There's something wrong. But it is Algy's ring. It may be a trap. Well, if it's a trap, I'm going to spring it before Hugh walks into it. Then I'll go with you. No, you stay here. When Hugh comes, tell him I've gone to Triangle Point. I hope you two gentlemen will be comfortable here for a little while. Perhaps you'll be interested in watching the last act of our little comedy through the window there. You see Triangle Point at the secret ammunition base. And when Captain Drummond goes there expecting to meet you, he'll meet instead. You can't do that! Then I shall take this knife, cut the rope, and you two will disappear into the slime below. Oh, no! Please! Just to give you something to think about, Jack. A good job. Even if a bit theatrical. Do you think Drummond will fall into your trap? I think so. If only we could get out of here and warn you. I don't see any possible way of doing it. So. Oh! Look, sir. Look. <sighs> The vouchers are after us already. <coughs> Take a reef and you're tough to help me. That's the train reason, so. Look what he's got. It's a knife. Betty, 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 pretty Betty. Betty. Nice Betty. Nice Betty. Sweet, please, Betty. Betty, please. Oh, Betty. Nice Betty. Nice Betty, Betty. 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 That's that, so. She's gone to Triangle Point. Triangle Point? Yes, they sent her this. Well, that's Algie's ring. I know. It's some sort of a trap, but she would go. They're up to something. I'll go after her. You go to the police station and get the authorities. It's time for a showdown. Hugh! Hugh! Oh, thank goodness. We thought you were on Triangle Point. Oh, I'm going there now. You mustn't, sir. Triangle Point is a secret ammunition dump. And Mr. Alpherson plans to blow you up there. Uh, Phyllis is there now. What? Tenny, you go after her. Yes, sir. Hurry now. Halsey, we must stop that machine. Where is it? Uh, in that warehouse. Get the police, Halsey. Cover the front entrance and I'll go through the window. Right ho. Good luck, old boy. I'm sure you'll agree that this is the most amazing invention of our time. I shall focus these two beams on that distant point. And I think that Captain Drummond is going to receive the surprise of his life. I think we're ready, gentlemen. Satisfied. I think you'll find the amount correct. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. I'll meet you at the hotel in an hour. Yes, sir. Now that there's nothing further to arrange. Nothing except to eliminate the two remaining witnesses. Would you care to see the splash? Drummond!
Get the machine, turn it on. Hill, I've got the police report, Kenny. Well, why don't you arrest somebody? Do something. Sergeant, you can arrest this man and his confederates. Hugh! Felix! What do you want him arrested for? For the murder of Richard Kennett. What's this? This is the stinger Scotland Yard has been looking for. Oh, come on, the three of you. 